Hi friends, I'm Jeffy G. Welcome back to the show, The Drum Show Lately. I've been on this bender about layered multi-sample drum kits lately. It's kind of crazy. Most drum software, drum apps, and drum racks are sample players, and they all play one sample at a time. The velocity is variable, but you're really just hearing that one sound softer or louder. It's not playing multiple samples at the same time. Now that single sample approach works fine for certain categories of drum sounds. Works great for electronic emulation of real kits. Works good for 80s drum machines like 707s, 808s, and Lin drums. Also works great for experimental work. You know, if you've built a percussion kit around human sounds or the sounds of cutlery in your kitchen or pots and pans, seems to work great. Problem is when you get to emulating real acoustic drums. You see, that's where the layered multi-sample really comes into play. And only a few of the drum apps and software that are out there actually support multi-sample. If you've been watching my channel, you know I'm a Logic fan and I use Drum Machine Designer quite a bit. So the next test in my mind was, can I take multi-sampled acoustic drums and build velocity layers into Drum Machine Designer? Well, it's more complicated than you might think. Let me show you what I've been doing. What we have here is a very simple Logic project with only one track. It's Drum Machine Designer and it's an empty kit. What I've done is I've dragged four samples into that kit they're all the kick drum and they all play when you play c1 each one is sensitive to a different velocity i have a little midi test file up at the top here and it just has individual c1 notes with different velocities and the velocities increase over time and what you'll see is the volume of each one of these is going to change as we go through the loop And that's exactly what we want. So that not only does the velocity change in terms of volume, but the sound and the number of drums that are being executed also increases. Let me walk you through the process step by step. I have a empty Logic project and I'm gonna assign the one track to Drum Machine Designer. It brings up an empty kit and the library. Assuming that you're going to pull kit pieces from the library within Logic, but that's not what I want to do. I have samples I've already captured of a drum kit. These samples are all labeled and organized. There's multiple samples of each drum kit piece from a Gretsch kit that were recorded in the studio. You'll see down here I have six different kicks. They all sound different and that's what we want because we want to create a layered kick drum where the sound changes depending on the velocity. So we're gonna start off with a quiet kick, drag it over into Drum Machine Designer. Then we're gonna take one that's slightly louder. We're gonna take one that's a little bit louder than that. And we're gonna finish off with the one that is the loudest. The next thing we want to do is assign them all to the same input key. The first one is attached to C1. We want to assign all the others to C1 as well. In this way, when we play C1, they all execute. It plays all four. Now, in order to create the layering, we want to limit the velocities that execute each sample. So on the first sample, which is the quietest, we're gonna limit the velocity range to any velocities from one to 100. On the next one, slightly louder, it'll execute between 40 and 110. The first loud sample will kick in at about 80, up to 127, and the loudest will only kick in on velocities over 110. If we play C1 lightly, it'll only execute the first sample, but the harder we push it, the more samples will be executed. And that's what gives us the dynamics of a 
layered kick drum. Let me just show you that one more time. If I play C1 very quietly, only the first kick will execute. A bit harder, the next one will come into play. Third one, a bit louder. And the fourth one, if I press the key very hard and it executes velocities up to 127. The obvious question, why bother? Well, real acoustic kits, when you hit the drum, it changes the sound with how hard you hit it. The pitch changes, the response of the head changes. The sound is different. It's not just louder or softer based on the velocity. On a higher velocity, the sound changes. Well, to capture that, you really have to sample acoustic drums very carefully in a high quality recording studio. You might play the snare 20 times. Different volumes in the middle, different volumes near the edge, different volumes with the snare on, with the snare off. You might sample just a snare drum 100 times. And now you need to take those multiple samples, categorize them, and build one snare instrument that's going to execute those different sounds at different velocities. But why go to all that trouble? That would be if you want to replace an acoustic drummer. For convenience, really. Now back in 2004, I actually did this with the Logic ESX24 sampler. I was in the studio recording an album, a good quality studio, with a drummer friend of mine, and we took time during a break to sample his Gretsch kit. We had a really good engineer that we were working with, and over the next couple of hours, we played each drum individually, recorded them, we did all the cymbals, we did mics below and above the snare, in front of and behind the kick drum, overheads, and we spent a lot of time to meticulously develop these samples. And then I took them home and I started the real work of building those layered samples with velocity ranges into the Logic Sampler. And this was back in version nine. So here we are in 2023, and I was thinking, is there better technology now for doing that? So I thought, I wonder if I still have those samples, and could I use them to build a new layered multi-sampled kit of that Gretsch? Here's just a final walkthrough of the layered Logic Drum Machine Designer kit I created with all those samples. Not all the drums I was after are layered. So if you look down here, you'll see these four kick samples down at the bottom are all assigned to input key C1. So when C1 plays, it has the potential of playing all of them, depending on the velocity ranges. I'm just gonna show you a little trick here. When you click on Drum Machine Designer on the cell of the sample, it, you can see it over on the side, but the track is not selected. So right now it says the velocity limit is 50 to 90, but if you click on the track, <laughs> see, it's one to 127, which is correct. That was my intention. And then the next sample, same thing, you have to click on the track, has the velocity range of 60 to 127. The next sample only executes with velocity ranges of 100 to 127. And then the loudest kick is the fourth one. And it only sounds when the velocity range is 100 to 127. So the harder you push the key, the louder it gets and the sound of the snare changes from a soft snare to a loud snare. So I did the same with snares. They're also layered and I have two sets. This set is on D1, so D1 plays all of the snares, and this one's on E1, and it plays all of those four snares depending on the velocity range. And I surrounded that with some other things. So on this first page, I've just got some single samples for, it's pretty quiet, and there was one other edge snare that I wanted to use, but again, just a single sample and two different claps. So everything on the first page of that drum machine designer kit is assigned to the first octave, C1 up to B1. On the second page, I started assigning symbols. Only three of the symbols are, again, multi-sample layered. And there's a crash, two crashes, and a ride symbol. 
and each of them are made up of three different sample sounds, depending on how the cymbal was hit. The harder you hit it, or hitting it differently, results in different sounds. And this is particularly important for, say, a ride, where you want the bell sound to be different than the edge sound, and you can control that by how hard you hit the key. And then just to round out that second page, I've got a couple of shakers, tambourine, and a cowbell and I left these two blank. On the third page, <laughs> these are all single samples. Uh, these types of drum sounds don't necessarily benefit from layered multi-samples, or I just didn't have enough samples. So for example, a hi-hat, several closed samples, and I've got slightly open, and I've got uh, looser as you go up the scale here. And there's a couple that are closed, sort of quiet closed. They're all single samples. And then all of the toms on here, I decided to go with single samples. Everything from an 8-inch tom down to a 14-inch floor tom. So that's the kit. If you're interested in getting this kit, I'm fine to share it with the samples. Uh, send me a comment or, um, or send me an email and I'll uh, give you a link to a location where you can download this thing. Now, while this was going on, I was also scouring the internet for really good, but reasonably priced, acoustic drum kits. Superior Drum and Easy Drummer rose to the top of my list, but they are expensive. They are professionally recorded and curated, and it's a great application package. So if you don't have a budget, that's a good way to go. At the same time, I stumbled across Spitfire Audio Abe Laborial Jr.'s drum kit, which is $29, and it's amazingly good. It is multiple samples, layered, lots of controls and variations, the sound of the drums. It really is just one kit, but the variations in that kit are exceptional. So I downloaded that, and I've been playing with that, and I'm Super excited about it, it's excellent. But it only pushed me further in the direction of saying, can I create these kits myself? So there's kind of two parts to this process. If you already have the recorded samples like I did, that's a good place to start. So the recording process can be laborious and potentially expensive if you're paying for studio time. It would be cheaper to buy software than it would to make your own. So I'm still on the fence about how far I go with this. But I have been talking to other friends that are drummers, that own studios, and have the right gear to make that recording. Now, I'm not particularly preoccupied with real sounding acoustic drums. Most of the music I create does not depend on its emulation of real drums, but there are some that do, and it's a nice tool to have at your side. It eliminates the need for me to bring a real drummer into my studio hook up 12 or 13 mics, and spend a few days trying to record drum parts. Once I have those samples, from that point forward, I can execute those samples in two ways. I can program the MIDI myself, or I can use an electronic kit, any electronic kit that creates MIDI, to capture the performance of a drummer and then apply those sampled sounds. The combination of the WAV and the AIF files made up 62 samples. So I dragged them into Logic, and this is zoomed in, but there's 62 tracks here. And I wanted to clean up these samples, so I want to show you what I did. I basically listened to each one. One of the things I noticed is they were, they were all different lengths. Every sample was different, and that might make sense. But I wondered if that was necessary, so some of them were really long, like this snare here on track 7 was incredibly long. But when I listened to it, the snare did ring out for that length of time. Two of the things I was looking for was, I'd watched some videos on how to clean up these samples, and they always had these fade outs, which is very important. That way the sample doesn't end abruptly. So I added fade outs to pretty much every sample here, and the length of those fade outs, there's like three standards, I had a quick fade, a medium fade, and a long fade. And then I started thinking about fade-ins. I noticed as I went through these that in some cases there was some leading silence at the beginning. So I had to trim the audio file. And you could see when I right-click here, my scissor tool comes up. I could just chop wherever I wanted to chop and then move it over to bar one, beat one. And I added the minimum fade-in. You know, I didn't want it to be noticeable, but I also didn't want there to be a click or a pop. So I did that for every track. And some of them I did in groups. You know, I just selected all the tracks in a group, 
like here you got three snares that were roughly the same length. I just selected them all and added the fade out and the fade in. The other thing I did was I renamed a lot of the regions. In this case, snare dash F. The reason I added a dash F or a dash P or MP, MF or FF was for pianissimo, fortissimo. I wanted to capture in the title something that indicates whether it's loud, quiet, medium, where does it fall in the spectrum. Uh, the reason I added it to the region is that when you export these, it uses the region name. Now you can kind of group together your activities. You'll see I got a lot of kicks, snares, hi-hat cymbals, and then I've got some individual sounds at the bottom here, things like two claps, cowbell, shaker, stick, tambourine. Also listen for any artifacts or any noise on any of these recordings. Well, these recordings were done by a professional engineer in a studio at the time, and they're really good quality. They had a lot of expensive outboard gear, and I was always impressed. Exporting them took a little bit of playing around. You select them all. Got to make sure you go right over to bar 1B1. Then I go under File, Export, and this option, because I want individual files for each one of these samples, this option seems to work best. 62 regions as audio files. There are some other options here. All tracks as audio file. Some of these options only create one file. You've got to make sure you choose an option that creates multiple individual files. And then the options for exporting this, trim silence at the end of file, have that turned on. Pick the format bit depth. This will depend on what you're starting with. And then down here in the name of each file, I've got the region name, which remember I've modified. I've got custom, which is nothing more than space, the month, space, and a year. So the output files look like this. And uh, it's fun to watch when you export. Done. Hopefully you learned a lot from this video about layered, velocity-driven, multi-sampled drum machines and how to create them. I've done quite a few videos on Logic's Drum Machine Designer and I've linked them all in the description area so you can watch others if you're interested in learning more. Last fall, I also did a detailed analysis of drum machine software and apps from other vendors. And I reviewed about 15 different packages. And if you want to watch that, the link to that is also in the description. Now lately, drums have been really important to me. I've been trying to reconcile a strategy that works for me and I've been trying to focus on using Logic to its full potential. If this kind of content is interesting to you, click on the like button, perhaps subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell for any new videos that I come out with. Thanks for watching this one.